how much do you need to make in order to live in Austin, Texas? Austin is one of the last big cities with a huge tech hub and a prestigious public education system where you can afford to live well without having to sell a kidney or sacrifice your firstborn child just to make your mortgage payments. But that doesn't mean it's dirt cheap either. In this video, I'm going to go deep into the actual cost of living here along with several common use cases so you can use it to determine is it the right fit for you. <laughs> Howdy everyone, it's Oreo Cannon here and let me start with a disclaimer. I am not a financial advisor, I'm just trying to help. In order to do that, I spent a lot of time doing a lot of research trying to come up with all the numbers, but they're not going to be 100% accurate for you. Every family has their own individual preferences and needs and spending categories. But what I'm hoping to achieve here is to let you see all the data so you can project your own situation into the calculator. Needless to say, the best approach is just to give me a call so we can kind of talk about it. I can put your individual parameters. But if you'd like access to my calculator, let me know in the comments. If I have enough comments, I think I'm going to program it and put it on my website. And why am I even talking about a calculator for a question that you can just ask in Google? Well, the truth is you can't really know how much you need to make in order to live in Austin, without knowing who you are. If you are a young student moving to downtown just to live in the city and rent until you figure out what to do with your life, it's a very different situation compared to a family with a baby and it's a very different situation compared to a family with four kids, two cats, and maybe even a dog. So I built this tool that is divided into three segments. First one is housing. If you are living in a smaller house compared to a larger house, the prices will differ. If you're living in downtown or in Cedar Park, the prices will differ. And if you are renting or owning, and if you're putting 20 down or 40% down, the prices will differ. So I downloaded the entire MLS and then I baked all of these parameters into the tool. And now we can kind of play with it and we can see the numbers. The second segment is your personal situation. How many adults are in your household? Children, children in daycare, vehicles. And are you finding your taxes separately or jointly? Yes, I went that deep. The third segment is the average baseline. So these numbers were taken from several sources, including Google and ChatGPT and all the AI friends, but also all my actual friends, because I've helped hundreds of people move here. And I sent them a survey and they filled it up. And then I kind of did the massaging and showed it to you. Now you might see that there is a budget. How did I achieve the actual income? Well, I reverse engineered the way that taxes work in the United States because there are marginal tax brackets, blah, 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 boring, boring. Main thing is at the end, I can take the budget and reverse engineer it into your income before taxes. So let's talk about scenario number one. You are a young individual moving to the city on your own and you're planning to rent a place in downtown. How much money do you need to make? So based on an average rent price of 2,400 bucks, and I should mention that you can actually rent for less, but you know, I'm taking an average here. You will need to make about $48,000 per year in order to rent a small condo in downtown. Now I should mention that all of these numbers are without 401k. Just to show you, if I take 401k here and add 10 grand, what do you know? It adds 10 grand to the pre-tax calculation. Just for you to know, typically I will show it without it so you can decide what to do. I highly advise you to do 401k, but hey, I'm not a financial advisor, so you don't have to listen to me. And what happens if we're going to rent something cheaper? Let's say that we're renting something for 1500 bucks, then our income can be $36,000 pre-tax. If we are planning to save up, and I highly, highly advise you to do that. So let's say that we put here 10 grand a year in savings, then we need to make $47,000 with this type of rental unit. And what if I actually wanted to buy a place in this case? So let's say that I am a, an owner and I'm putting 5% down, let's say with an FHA loan or something of that nature, I will need to have a PMI. So let's add it here. Let's remove the savings for a moment. And now I can see that you need to make $60,000 and have 20 grand in your pocket if you are planning to move to downtown and buy a small condo, assuming an average property price of $380,000. One thing that is missing here is the HOA, but again, granularity, it's kind of hard to go deep, deep into the details. All right, so let's go to example number two. We are a young couple, no children, having the best phase of our lives. I'm, I'm allowed to say this, right? Because I have kids, I'm allowed. 
we're moving to downtown or central Austin and we want to rent a place. So assuming we're renting something between 1,000 to 1,600 square feet of size in central Austin and we're putting aside six grand for vacations and 10 grand for general savings. So we need to make together 78 thousand dollars let's say that we also want to have a car because the public transportation in austin sucks in this case we need to make ninety three thousand dollars together unless we already own the car free and clear and in that case we only need to make eighty one thousand dollars you can see all the little numbers that i put there and what if we want to own our place in that case with all the same parameters from before we are trying to buy a property we're going to put five percent down and an average price of about six hundred forty thousand dollars we need to make one hundred twenty five thousand dollars per year and have thirty two thousand dollars in our pocket in order to make it work and if we plan to put twenty percent down we're going to need to make $109,000 and to have $128,000 in the bank. If we are adding a baby into the equation and assuming that they go to daycare, then we need to make $133,000. Yes, babies are kind of expensive, but if you hate your free time, they're totally worth it. Let's talk about this couple that are moving to the suburbs because, hey, it's kind of fun here for families. They have two vehicles because, come on, like it just you can't have no vehicle here. It's kind of hard. They're putting the same six grand aside for vacations and 10 grand aside for general savings and they need to make $107,000 in order to rent a place in Brushy Creek, Cedar Park and Leander and all the type of northern suburbs that we have here. If they wanted to buy a place with 5% down and 6.5 interest rate, they will have to make $122,000 based on these baseline and assumptions. And they also need to have 20 grand in the pocket to make it work. If they're planning to put 20% down and avoid the PMI, now they need to make $112,000 and have in their pocket 75 grand to spend. And all of this with the assumption that the property price is around $375,000. Let's talk about a fourth example. A larger family, two adults, two children in the public school system, one toddler, maybe a cat, I'm not counting you cat, and we're planning to rent a place between 1,600 to 2,500 square feet in the northern suburbs. In that case, with the assumption of 2,400 bucks for the rent, they will need to make $129,000. And mind you, I keep the same $6,000 for vacation and 10 grand for savings. If you want to apply 401k or the 529 program for, uh, for a college savings account for the kids, you need to apply it for the pre-tax income and they wanted to buy the place and put five percent down they will need to make around 157 thousand dollars and that's under the assumption that the property cost around 500 grand and all of the other assumptions i made here they also need to have 25 grand in the bank in order to make the purchase and i would say probably more in order to furnish and do all of those type of things if they're planning to put 20 percent down then they need to make 143 jointly and to have a hundred grand in the bank in order to make the purchase. Last but not least, let's talk about the families that are moving here from a high cost of living area and they want to spoil themselves. They're sick of paying too much money for too small of places and they're planning to buy something larger. So assuming the same type of family structure, but now I'm, to, I'm taking into account a 2,500 to 4,000 square feet house with 25% down for optimal interest rate then you need to make around one sixty nine thousand dollars and you need to have in the bank 185 grand not a small price but you know it's all about comparison if you're coming from california maybe that's not so much and in this calculation i'll include the cleaning services and yard work and yes i know it's not accurate and i know you have something else but it's way better than anything you're going to get in google if you want a one-on-one -on -one consultation you can reach out to me via the link below and if you just want this tool to be public leave me a comment if i see enough engagement i'm just going to code it and put it on my website for free so just let me know. So many couples are making decisions based on gut feelings and not based on data, but it's really, really important to know what you're getting yourselves into. Make sure that you are making all the due diligence before deciding on a move or before deciding on a purchase of a new house. The good thing about Austin, as I hope you can see, there's plenty of choices for everyone. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.